BFTB. Best fight the best. I just watched, well, I watched it last night, but I rewatched um, it again. The press conference, the Wilder Fury press conference. And there was a lot of a lot of parts in there that um, stood out to me. Um, in my live stream yesterday, I was talking about how Deontay Wilder is he's just too nice to these guys. He really is. He's just too nice. And they continually try to shit on him at all costs, every time. And he's just, he's, he's just nice to these guys. I mean, like I said, he's not nice in the ring. Not when they get in the ring, he's not nice. But um, outside of the ring, and like he's legitimately Deontay Wilder. Like in the ring, he's the bronze bummer. But outside the ring, he's legitimately Deontay Wilder. He's just a nice guy to these, to these people that are not really nice to him. Um, it's like Tyson Fury. First off, Tyson Fury. Why are you wearing uh, your hoodie on? Your, he's probably still trying to lose weight. That's what it looked like to me. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm saying that's what it looked like. It looked like the man is still trying to lose weight. Because he had a, a, a hoodie on, his hat on, um, a big jacket on. I know it's not that hot. I mean, that cold in Vegas. You had a hoodie on, a hat on, a big jacket on. You had, and you've been in Vegas all the time, so you're acclimatized. Um, you had all this, cl all these clothes on. You had, um, I don't know what you had on underneath of it. You know how those people wear those, um, those plastic bags to sweat. But I don't know if he had one of those on or not. I have no idea, but it damn sure looked like it. It damn sure looked like. Bro, what are you doing? It damn sure looked like. Um, it damn sure looked like he had on, um, you know, some of that shit that they wear to lose weight underneath of his fucking outfit. That's what it looked like. It looked like his ass was trying, still trying to lose weight. And for someone that talking about they're going to gain weight, they want to gain weight. Yeah, I want to gain weight. I want to, bro, these people can't drive for shit. It's a yield, my nigga, and there's no one coming the other direction. Anyways. Anyways, um, listen, Tyson, I don't know what was wrong with him, bro. I don't know if it was, he, he just, he didn't look himself to me. Like he, he tried to, he tried to, I don't, it was, it was like she was trying to gas himself up. You know, the, for the first fight, he did it, he, he didn't have to do that. For the first fight, it was like, all right, you know. I'm Tyson Fury, I'm the boxer, Deontay Wilder can't box, so, you know, I'm just gonna go in here and style on him and call it a day. And that's clearly not what happened. Clearly. And let me address something right quick. Let me address one thing. Alright? For everybody that's keep, I keep getting it in my DMs, can sit, oh, Tyson Fury outboxed him. Who do you think won that fight? I keep getting this question over and over and over again. They keep asking me the same shit because what you're trying to do is get me to say, oh, well, really, Tyson Fury won. No, he didn't. The fight was a draw. <laughs> it was a draw. Oh, well, he was robbed. He, he had three overseas judges, and the ref, by his own admission, said he woke him up. He said he startled him. When he stood over him, when he got to five, he was yelling. He startled Tyson Fury. It seemed like he startled Tyson Fury. His eyes opened up. Those are Jack Reese's own words. Those are not my words. There was three overseas, three of them, three overseas judges. And the ref who said he startled him and he said, um, well, I wanted to give him every opportunity because something for the fans. Something for the fans. But that's not your job. That's not your job. But Tyson Fury was robbed. And the person who quote unquote robbed Tyson Fury was the British judge. The British judge was the person who quote unquote robbed him. The British judge. The one that he brought straight from his house of Watford, Dumbledore, or Gondor, wherever the fuck he came from. But they don't, you don't want to talk about that. You want to leave that part out. That the British judge 
was the one that gave you a draw. The British judge. That's the one who robbed you. Anyways. But for all these people that keep saying, oh, you don't, if you think Tyson, if you think Tyson Fury lost, then you don't know boxing. Fine. Fine. Jack Reese said Deontay Wilder won rounds one through four. He, Deontay Wilder clearly won round nine and he clearly run, won round 12 because he damn near killed Deontay Wilder. I mean, t killed Tyson Fury in round 12 and he knocked him down in round nine. He clearly won both of those rounds. So when you add two knockdowns to four rounds, I know you guys act like you know boxing. I know you do. But when you add up the scorecards for four rounds and two different rounds that had two that had knockdowns in them, that is 114 to 112 for the person who, who won the first four rounds and then knocked the other person down twice. That person won 114, 112 on the scorecards, and that is not my scorecard. That is Jack Reese's scorecard. The third man who was in the ring. The third man who was in the ring, Jack Reese, who allowed the fight to continue. His scorecard was 114, 112 for Deontay Wilder. Try telling him he doesn't know boxing. Try telling him that. Because y'all praise him right now. So go tell Jack Reese that he doesn't know boxing. Go tell him. Then they're talking about because the refs are three American refs now. I mean, three American judges and Kenny Bayless as the referee. Three American judges and Kenny Bayless as the referee. For the first fight, there was three overseas judges. Three overseas judges. <laughs> and uh, so three overseas judges and Jack Reese, who just makes up his own rules as the, as the ref. For this fight, it's Kenny Bayless as the ref and three American judges. This is 100% fair. 100% fair especially when the first fight had Jack Reese a white man I don't give a fuck if y'all say oh race isn't race is a part of it and I'm not expecting I'm not expecting Kenny Bayless to give Deontay Wilder any special favor because he's a black man but what I'm saying to y'all is facts these are facts what I'm saying to y'all Jack Reese was a white man that's a fact the over the three judges were overseas judges that's a fact that's a fact. Jack Reese um, had fighters, had Tyson Fury, gave him all this extra time, had him going, dancing around the left and right, you know, had him doing all this shit that no other referee does. None of the other, other referees do that shit. Jack Reese says it's written. Written where? Where is it written at? I've never seen it. I've never seen it in the rules. Because Jack Reese said it's now written. It's a written rule. I've never seen in the rules where the ref says it has to now make them walk to the left and walk to the right. I, have, I haven't seen it. And if that's the case, then Jack Reese wasn't following the rules in the Charlo fight, in the Charlo versus Harrison fight. He wasn't following the rules in the Corolla fight. Okay, he wasn't following the rules. He just picks and chooses times to follow the rules. It's based on his discretion. That's not a rule. A rule that bases it on my discretion is built to be biased because I can use it when I want to use it. That's not a rule. I can say, oh, well, you look okay to me. Go ahead and continue to fight. Or I can say, oh, well, you don't look okay. Walk to the left and walk to the right. Or I can say, well, shit, I bet money on this. I told my family that, you know, bet on this guy. So let me give this guy some extra time. Walk to the left, walk to the right. Um, do you want to continue? Are you sure you want to continue? Let me see your mouthpiece. Touch your cup. I can say anything I want to do. And then I can just say, oh, well, you know, I, I, I was I'm for fighter safety. Man, get out of my face with that shit, bro. Get out of my face. And I'm not, I'm not saying that Jack Reese did any of those things, but I am saying that Jack Reese used an unwritten rule that he doesn't use all the time himself. Those are facts. 
But anyways, this press conference was, brought. Deontay Wilder slaughtered Tyson Fury in his press conference, bro. Slaughtered him. Had the man on hush mouth multiple times. Multiple times, bro. Multiple times. And I see that these guys do the same old Eddie Hearn tactics. The same ones. The same ones. It's, it's, it's very childish, in all honesty. But it's smart, though. It's childish but smart. They start something and then go run and tell real fast. Because after they started it and then they go run and tell like as they're at school. So they hit you and then they go run and tell, um, oh, teacher, teacher, um, this guy, this, this kid is being mean to me. So then when the kid goes back and gets their hit back, because you know kids got to get their hit back. Now that kid that got their hit back, they're the one in trouble. Because you you went to the teacher and told you went and hit this kid, then you went to the teacher and told on them that they're being mean to you. So now the 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 view that the teacher sees is all right. Let me pay attention to this. Let me pay attention to this. Now the teacher pays attention to um, the view, and then next thing you know, the boy that got hit goes and hits the other boy back, and then next thing you know, the boy that got hit first is the one in trouble. That's what these dudes be doing, bro. That's exactly what they're doing. Eddie Hearn out here talking about uh, they're using Joshua's name. Nobody knew Joshua. They knew Deontay Wilder. They knew Tyson Fury. They knew Vladimir Klitschko. Nobody knew who Joshua was. But Eddie Hearn went and tied Joshua's name. Oh, Joshua knocks Wilder out in three rounds. So then when Wilder says, okay, well, then make the fight happen. All of a sudden, oh, you're using Joshua's name. Oh, look at the world. Hey, world. Hey, world, look right here. Look, jo look at Wilder. Look, look, world. Look at Wilder calling out Joshua. Look at Wilder calling to fight Joshua. He's trying to use Joshua's name. Bro, nobody was talking about Joshua. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. You literally went and used Wilder's name. You knew damn well he was going to respond to you. And as soon as he responds, all of a sudden, look, look, yeah, of course Wilder wants to fight Joshua. He wants to cherry pick him. He wants to fight an inexperienced Joshua. Look, look, everybody, look, world, look. Bro, you poked that bear. You did that, Eddie Hearn. Smart, very smart. Very smart. To the fucking people that want to see that. To the idiots, to the fools. To the haters that already hated Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury is doing the exact same thing. Tyson Fury, do, he did the exact same thing. He used the exact same approach. The exact same shit. The exact same thing. He jumped in the ring with Deontay Wilder after he got his knockout, knowing good and damn well um, that you are Ben Snorting Coke. You wanted no parts. You retired. <laughs> Deontay Wilder is the one that uh, motivated you. You even said this. You out of your own mouth said this. Deontay Wilder's told you what you can't do. That's the reason why you got back in the gym and the reason why you did all this because Wilder said you can't do it. So you're gonna prove him wrong. Then you come back out and say, oh, well I brought him to the big time. I brought Wilder to the big time. I gave him the big fight. No, the fuck you didn't. You were binge snorting coke. You were fucking fat as hell. He's crying like a bitch about mental illness. He gave you that. Deontay Wilder gave you the drive to get your fat ass back in shape. Deontay Wilder gave you your paydays. You ain't fighting Anthony Joshua. You're fighting Deontay Wilder. Your biggest paydays are against Deontay Wilder. That is your biggest paydays. Your biggest payday was not against Vladimir Klitschko. It was against Deontay Wilder. Your second biggest payday was not against Vladimir Klitschko. It was against Deontay Wilder. It is against Deontay Wilder, the one you are about to get. The reason why you got your contract was not from Vladimir Klitschko. It was from Deontay Wilder. That's why you got your contract with ESPN and top rank. Because of Deontay Wilder. Nobody gave a fuck about you with Surfer. Nobody care about that shit with Pianetta. When you fought Deontay Wilder, that's when you got your contract. That's when you got your deal. Deontay Wilder brought you into big time. Deontay Wilder gave you your biggest pay paydays. Those are facts. 
those are facts. And when Deontay Wilder told him that, that motherfucker got hush mouth like shit. Hush mouth stuttering and shit. Never seen Fury like that. I've never seen him like that. He's always been um, quick um, and slick with his with his mouthpiece. He got shut the fuck up multiple times. He tried to get up and fake like he's being tough. Deontay Wilder didn't even flinch, bro. Mamba mentality. He reminded me when that dude, uh, what the hell was the old buddy's name? Barnes or some whatever. When he he act like he was gonna throw the ball in uh in uh Kobe's face and Kobe didn't even flinch. He just sat there. He was just that shit, bro. Mamba mentality. Deontay Wilder was like, sit down, sit your ass down. You all this jumping up here, acting all sit your ass down, sit down, big mama. You big banana, sit down. And Tyson Fury sat his ass right the fuck down. I was like, damn, dude. He didn't do that in the first press conference when Deontay Wilder was talking uh, shit to him. His ass was like, still standing around, dancing around, and doing stupid shit. And he sat smooth the fuck down. Smooth down. And then when the trainers got up there, it was even more. <laughs> it was even more like. Uh, pre uh, prevalent that Deontay Wilder uh, won this whole shit, bro. Because uh, Jay Diaz was like, bro, I was, uh, Tyson Fury and Ben Davis had something special. Something that we all were saying, bro. We all were saying that Tyson Fury and Ben Davis had something special. Man, Jay Diaz was like, bro, they, they had something special, so I don't understand why they broke it up. Like, I don't understand why he got rid of them. Um... But what Jay Diaz didn't say and what I seen is that Tyson Fury believed he needs something more. And he even said that. He needed something more. Well, if you need it, because he said his very own words. Clearly what I was doing the first time didn't work. Well, if it didn't work, how can you claim you was robbed? Now, I take issue, I take issue with that, with with um, Tyson Fury and, you know, I, all these uh, fake ass, weird ass fans and haters saying with Tyson, oh, it didn't work. Yeah, Tyson Fury, it's good that he's getting, um, you know, Sugar Hill, it's good. There's some blah, blah, blah. Bro, you had, you had Ben Davison, you had a very good relationship with Ben Davison. That man was with you at your darkest times and brought you through your darkest times back to um, championship level fights. And you just scrapped this nigga. You just shit can this guy who brought you back to big fights, championship level fights. Brought you back. You just scrap him. Right, he, I take issue with that. I take issue with that with these same people, Tyson Fury included, that say he was robbed. And then Tyson Fury come and saying, "Well, the reason why I changed to this to uh, you know, to um, this guy Sugar Hill was because what I did the first time obviously didn't work." How can you say you was robbed and then say what you did the first time didn't work? How do those two even, those two don't even coexist. They do not coexist. You were not robbed if what you did didn't work. You were not robbed. The British judge, the British judge, your countryman, the Canadian, your, these are your country people. The Canadian guy had you winning. The British guy, literally from your home country, said it was a draw. The Mexican guy said you lost. So if you're saying you was robbed, everybody knows you won. Everybody like who? The British guy said it was a draw. 
the Mexican guy said you lost. You came out in a fucking uh, El Rey or whatever the fuck you was with a Mexican mask on, talking about the Mexican holiday for Otterbox. I'm going to have a Mexican war. Well, the Mexican guy said you lost. Badly lost. The British guy said it was a draw. So you're coming out here saying, I train, I changed my trainer. I changed my trainer because what I did obviously and clearly didn't work. Okay, then you were not robbed. You changed your trainer because what you did didn't work. You were not robbed. You were not robbed. Just what you tried didn't work. According to the British judge, it was a draw. According to the British judge that nobody wants to talk about. The British judge had it a draw. The British judge. How about you spend some time talking about the British judge, your countryman, who had it a draw. Because the British judge could have said you won then we wouldn't be having this conversation. Or he could have said that you lost and we wouldn't be having this conversation. The British judge is the one that said it was a draw. The British judge. You were not robbed. You lost. The British judge saved you. He saved you because the best your countrymen the British judge could give you was a draw. That is the best he could do. The whole purpose you brought in the British judge is to have a British bias. And the best the British judge could do is give you a draw. The best bias that he could give you was a draw. And you're telling everybody you was robbed and that's the reason why you changed your trainer. That makes no sense at all. It doesn't make sense. Because if you was robbed, then that means your trainer did his job and it was somebody else who didn't do their job. It was someone else. It wasn't your trainer. If you was robbed, then your trainer did enough for you to win. All right? If you were robbed, your trainer did his job. If you were robbed, your trainer did enough for you to win. But somebody else had something to do with that. You were robbed. The judges, the refs, somebody else robbed you, not your trainer. Your trainer trained you to win. You won based on what your trainer provided you. Somebody else took it from you. So you cannot say, I was robbed and get rid of my trainer. I was robbed so I have to do something different. That makes no sense. You're doing something different because you know you lost. You're doing something different because you know you can't knock Deontay. You can't beat Deontay Wilder. You can't. You cannot outbox him. You can't. Because if you could, then you would have kept Ben Davison and you would be outboxing him this time. You would not be talking about getting him out of there in two rounds. You would not be saying, oh, I won't get a fair shake in the, U in the U.S. And then you're fighting in the U.S., Oh, I won't get a fair shake in the U.S. I won't get a fair shake. Well, if you won't get a fair shake, then why didn't you petition Deontay Wilder to fight in Wembley? Why didn't you say, hey, Deontay, bro, 50-50, bro. Listen, we had overseas judges and it, let's, let, we'll change the ref and we'll have American judges. Let's fight in the U.K. Let's fight in the U.K. Or we'll change, we'll, we'll have a different ref. We'll have one American judge, we'll have one UK judge, and then we'll have one Mexican or Canadian or Spanish, whatever judge, French, whatever, Russian. We'll have a Russian judge, Chinese judge. Let's do that. We'll have an American judge, a British judge, a Chinese judge, and we'll fight in the UK since we fought in America the first time. If you're claiming you won't get a fair shake in America, that was his cry. Why are you fighting a rematch in America then? Why did you fight the last three fights in America? Four fights. Why? All for show. And Deontay Wilder exposed him in his press conference. Badly, bro. Badly. Badly exposed him, bro. Badly exposed him. Tyson, in the first fight, I admit, and I have said this before, that Tyson Fury was in Deontay Wilder's head. I admit that. Deontay Wilder is all up in Tyson Fury's head. 
badly in his head, bro. Badly. Badly in his head. Just remember, when Tyson Fury fought McDermott, I think his name was. Yeah, McDermott. When he fought McDermott for the first fight, he was light. For the second fight, and he was light in the first fight, and he lost. But they gave him the victory. He lost the first fight. Tyson Fury clearly lost to McDermott the first fight. But they gave it to Tyson Fury. In the rematch, Tyson Fury was 270. Any coinky dink? <laughs> Any coinky dink on this one? Any coinky dink? He's do he is repeating what he did with McDermott. That's what he's doing. He's repeating it. Unfortunately, McDermott didn't floor his ass twice. McDermott was not running through his head like that. And it was all British, so nobody really gave a fuck. Just being real. No, I'm not shitting on the British. I'm just being real. Nobody cared. This is different. Deontay Wilder is all up in this man's head because Tyson Fury knows that Deontay Wilder can knock him out. He knows that because he was knocked out by his very own admission. This Deontay Wilder is all up in this man's head, bro. This, wow, wow, bro. I was watching this like, damn, this does not look like the Tyson Fury I'm used to. He's always like going in on people, clowning them and doing and embarrassing them. And now, even if even if you don't believe he's going to win the fight, or you do, you think he's going to win the fight, like with Klitschko, or whatever. He's always clowning. None of those antics. None of them. None of them. And the last thing I'm going to say is. Talking about bringing back in Sugar Hill, um, getting with the Kronk Gym. Bro, you was with them. You was already with them. You trained with not a disciple of Emmanuel Stewart. You tra Emmanuel Stewart trained you. And you still weren't getting knockouts. What makes you think a disciple is going to train you to get knockouts? You trained with the Emmanuel Stewart himself. And you were winning on points. But Mysterio, and you were younger. You were younger. You were in, in better shape, according to these fucking weirdos. And you weren't getting knockouts. And you was trained by Emmanuel Stewart. The Emmanuel Stewart, not a disciple. But mysteriously, a disciple of Emmanuel Stewart with a Tyson Fury later in his career is supposed to give him knockouts now. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Get out of my face. You're getting fucking destroyed. You're going to, you're getting destroyed and I don't think you're fighting no trilogy. Dillian White is next. You heard it here first. BFTB, shout out to the LDBC, bro, and I'm out.